Celtics at home tonight facing elimination again down 3-1 to the Heat. Boston, I'll remind you, has won four straight road elimination games. But tonight they'll be at home, which proved lately to be a disadvantage for them. So I want to show you two numbers. All right, here's the first one. The Celtics are an eight and a half point favorite tonight. Miami was a 13 point underdog in game five just a few weeks ago against Milwaukee and they won that game. So don't you take this one for what it's worth. The number I really want you to see is this one. Teams in NBA history that have faced three nothing deficits are zero and 150. Right McNutt. Mm -hmm. Well guess what Greeny says. What Change say? the graphic. Woo! This thing is going to be one and 150. I'm on record and I'm doubling down today. The Celtics are going to make history and they're going to work their way all the way back into this thing and they're going to win it. Vince Carter has all the insight you could ever imagine. He's faced a three nothing deficit. Wendy is covering the series but I will start with you Monica. Is it McNutt's for me to say the Celtics are going to do something no NBA team has ever done before. They're going to win this series. I, I, mm, I think it's unlikely, but there's an absolute reason why we played the games. And I think that there's an opportunity there should this Celtics team really have figured something out. Honestly, Greeny, if this was almost any other team not named my, the Miami Heat who were in this same position last year versus the Celtics, I would give this thing a real chance because the Celtics are that talented. But to me, I just don't see Jimmy Butler allowing this team to be beat again in the, at the same stage compared to what we saw last year. And even when you think back to last year's series, although the Celtics won, it wasn't just that game seven phenomenon where they sort of dwindled down the stretch. Mm -hmm. The Heat could rallied a couple different times over the course of that series that made it really interesting down the stretch. I'm not sure that that character trait has been completely erased, and we obviously know there's different leadership there for the Celtics this year. Yeah, those who don't remember the way the series went last year, the Celtics had a 3-2 lead and a chance to close it out at home in game six, completely fell apart in the fourth quarter of that game, went back to Miami for game seven, had a huge mm -hmm. lead, gave away almost mm -hmm. all of it Jimmy Butler actually had a shot in the air that would have beaten them at the very end and it didn't go so history is not necessarily on my side but I think talent is so Vince Carter let me come to you on that before I go to Wendy because he has so much but but Vince you've been down three nothing in a series before and, and while you didn't come all the way back to win that you did force a game six in that take us through the mentality of a team that is facing that kind of, of three nothing hole and how it starts to claw its way back into a series. Yeah, it was to this uh, to a Boston team that was very, very good. But we were very good as well and uh, with the Orlando Magic that, and feeling very good about ourselves because we had just swept our way through uh, the Eastern Conference uh, to get to this situation 4-0 uh, against Atlanta as well as 4-0 against the Charlotte, well, Bobcats at the time. And it was just an easy way. So we were like, okay, we're ready to go. And I think we got a little too cocky and Boston hit us in the mouth and it was tough to recover, but we did not want to get swept and we wanted to make it a game. It was, and like everyone has said, just give just give us a chance. Just win one. Just win one. And just win one. And and we, we, we finally got a win or two and get, got to Boston and had a chance. And then all of a sudden, they took over and they got it done. So if, if, you're, if you're the Miami Heat, you have, I mean, if you're, excuse, well, the Miami Heat, you want to go ahead and take care of business right now. You're very capable. Uh, you, you had a 15 turnovers. You shot 25% from three. Uh, you know, so, it, it, and their defense, Miami's defense has been great. You're going to have to defend. Boston figured out how to defend, and that's the little things, is turnovers, taking care of the ball. You know, Boston only had 10 turnovers. Jason Tatum had five of those. That is concerning to me, but that was the thing. We just had to stick together. Stick to the game plan and not turn the ball over. And, of course, you got to make shots. All right. Now, Wendy has been covering this series for us. And, and, Wendy, in our meeting this morning, you used a term that would have made Jerry Seinfeld very proud <laughs> to describe what this series has <laughs> been and thus why it is so unpredictable. Yeah, this is a bizarro conference finals. I've never <laughs> quite seen a series like this. Um, whatever is up is down. Your favorites are your underdogs. Your underdogs are your favorites. It's kind of laughable that the Miami Heat are listed as underdogs. They have won eight times as an underdog this postseason, second most all time in uh, in recorded history. Um, that the underdog has been this successful against the spread. They have blown apart the models for ESPN's BPI. The computer is basically run home to mama. It has no idea what's <laughs> going to happen. And the, the strange thing about this is that the Celtics seem to play better when they're behind. This is a, it's a, something that I've w witnessed over the last two postseasons. Um, for a team that's this strong, it's unusual. And let me just articulate it this way. 
In the last two years, Greeny, they have four, one, two, three, four, road elimination game victories. This is more than most Hall of Famers have in their career. LeBron mm. James, the most decorated playoff performer in the history of the NBA in terms of number of series, number of games, points, finals, whatever. He has four in his whole career of those. They have four in the last two years, but they're 10 and 11 at home during that stretch. Do you know how hard it is to go 10 and 11 at home over a two year stretch in the playoffs? You have to be good enough to play in that many series, but how can you possibly win that many series when you can't win at home? And so that's why this doesn't make any sense. So if what you're looking for is for me to say that this could be historically a uh, historic series and somebody could defeat that 150 point number, yeah, because nothing is making sense right now, but also nothing is making sense. So I'm going to show up and just try to figure out what's going on as it's, as it's happening. I'm going to go back to the one thing I think I know, which is with, without in any way meaning to disrespect the Heat, they've been magnificent. Jimmy Butler is, has been the best player, maybe in the entire playoffs, not named Nikola Jokic. And Eric Spolstra may very well be the best coach in the sport. But... The Celtics are the better team. There isn't any – all year long they've been the better team. For two years, basically since Christmas of two years ago, they've probably been the best team in the NBA. So it doesn't make any sense to me that they would play as badly as they did in the second halves of games one and two and then the entirety of game three. Some semblance of normalcy has to be restored. And I felt like that began on uh, whatever night it was, Tuesday – whatever night it was that they won game Tuesday, four. Yep. I've lost track of days here. <laughs> <laughs> and and that it is it is just going to come back to what it should be. If the Celtics play the way they should, then there is no reason in my mind why every single time they go out on the floor in this matchup, they shouldn't win. I agree with you, Greeny, but in theory, Vegas, our BPI, everybody that watches basketball, no one would have predicted that they would have gotten into an 0-3 hole anyway. Right. right. And so I understand you, and this is why it is very, very unique. This series has been a ton of fun. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Could the 1 and 150, as you predicted, happen? Sure. But to me, the other thing that we know about this series is, to your point, Jimmy Butler is on an absolute mission. Yeah. And his ability to rally his team and have those guys playing in their exact role effectively when it matters. And of these two teams, to, to Wendy's point, which team is more comfortable in a nasty fourth quarter? And it appears to be, not just in this series, but over the course of the season even, the Miami Heat. And so, I know everybody likes to say it's the NBA Finals and it's four games, not one. Well, the Heat only need one more. Right. But, but they had to get their way here. And, Wendy, we have something I would describe as sneaky big news here about the potential for one player that we might not see tonight. Tell us the very latest on Gabe Vincent. Yeah, so Gabe Vincent uh, pretty significantly sprained his left ankle late in game th uh, four. He's being listed as questionable by the Heat after getting examined yesterday. Now, that is actually good news to me because that looked like a doubtful out situation the way he turned it over. I'm sure the fact that it's the playoffs is playing a role there. He's been really good in this series. 29 mm -hmm. points in game three. He had 17 points in game four before he got hurt. If he is, even if he's able to play and he's not himself, Look for Jimmy Butler to get more time at point guard. The Heat are already down two guards this playoffs, Tyler Hero and Victor Oladipo. They're thin at guard. So if Gabe Vincent isn't himself, Jimmy Butler with the ball more, I'm not sure how that affects the Heat, but it would certainly put the onus more in Jimmy to be a playmaker. And then let me come back to Vince for the – go ahead, Vince. I can see you want to jump in. Go. Well, well, let's not forget you have Kyle Lowry sitting on your bench as well, uh, an NBA champion, a guy who's – who in the beginning of the year was your starter and very capable of orchestrating your offense. I don't know if he'll, he could put up the big numbers, but at the same time, he's a gamer. He's a big-time guy, and he understands the moment in situational basketball. And so I think Kyle Lowry will play a huge role in this, even if Gabe Vincent can't play and can't perform to that level as well. I'm old enough to remember a time, as we bring Wendy and Vince into the conversation here, I'm old enough to remember a time, Brian Winhorst, when they said, you never pick a 16 against a 1 in the NCAA tournament. Mm. It's never happened, and it will never happen. All things eventually happen, and it feels to me like this is the opportunity. <coughs> Wendy, why are you shaking your head like that at me <laughs> disapprovingly? <laughs> It's all, it's all conventional wisdom. Conventional wisdom doesn't mean anything in this series. I'm telling you, if you think conventionally, you're going to keep having egg on your face. 
The, the Heat have eight wins as underdogs in this postseason. It's the second most all-time. By the time it's over, they're probably going to be the first most all-time. The Celtics, as you mentioned, have a losing record at home. The Heat have five road wins in this playoffs. If you want to say that they're the favorite, the Celtics are the favorite, you do you. I say nobody knows anything when it comes to these two teams. I, that's fair. And so, Wendy, let me try and win you over with this. The only thing I think I know is that the Celtics are a better team, or at least they should be a better team. Look, this is going to sound like I'm diminishing the Heat. The Heat are ridiculous. I can't believe what they're doing with the people they have doing it. Jimmy Butler is absolutely brilliant. He, he's, he has been as good. He's been the best player in the East in these playoffs, let's put it that way. And Eric Spolstra might be proving he's the best coach in the sport. But up and down that roster, Wendy, the Celtics should be the best team in the league. I know they don't play that way often enough. But generally, when their backs are up against the wall, they have. And I'm counting on the fact that they will continue to. Does that buy you over at all? After watching the Celtics in person the last two playoff runs, do you know how many nights I've spent in this hotel that I'm at right now in Boston? <laughs> Dozens the last two years. Yeah. I'm going to tell you <laughs> that very oddly, the Celtics do not play well when they're, when they're marginally ahead in games. They play their best when they are behind and they play their best when they're way ahead. So I would say tonight's game, if you are a Celtics fan, you probably want them to be down going into the second half and the fourth quarter. If they're up four, six points, look out. Okay, so, so every, as Wendy says, <laughs> down is up, up is down. Let me try and get an explanation from my players here, Monica McNutt and, and Vince Carter. V VC, I'll start with you. How does one explain a team that is as inconsistent as the Celtics are? How do you explain a team that plays below the level of its talent in big moments as often as they do? How do you explain a team that some nights look like they are the best team in the NBA and it's not even close, and other nights look as discombobulated as they do? How do you explain it? I, I, it's, it's hard to explain because they're so talented and now they, they have a lot of experience, and we've seen this over the over the last couple of years with the Boston Celtics, but they've found ways to survive and advance and keep themselves alive. Obviously, they didn't get it done last year, and it, it's just weird. Like, listen to Wendy talk. You're just like, you look at those numbers, and it's like, oh, man. Like, as a team, you dream of going into the second, into the fourth quarter being ahead because now you just say you want to control the game. All you have to do is take care of the basketball. And then there's teams like, like, like you're saying, you have to look at Boston Celtics the other way around. Like, they need to be down. It's like you need to have the, your back against the wall to, to, to bring out the best in you, and that's not a great feeling when you're down uh, in, in a series in a closeout game at that with the, with the Jimmy Butler uh, who's playing outstanding with the Miami defense that has the capabilities of locking down and putting a stranglehold on your offense. So I, I can't explain it, but they're going to have to find a way. And one, first and foremost, they're going to have to defend and take care of the basketball. Mm -hmm. Jason mm -hmm. Tatum played great. But five turnovers, he had he had half of their turnovers. And you can't have that, particularly if you don't play well at home. McNutt is nodding along. Go ahead. Well, well, I just I was listening to you ask that question, and I think consistency is kind of the secret sauce of life and to the successful, right? Like, the teams that find a way to be most consistent in their identity are the most successful. And I'm not knocking the Celtics at all, because I wouldn't use the phrase better team, but more talent, for sure, without question. But what we've seen from Miami is a team that is certain in their identity in terms of basketball and their character, right? There is no way that a game is tight and Jimmy Butler doesn't have the basketball. Perhaps that is because of the roster in and of itself, but it's also because they know exactly who they are and who their guy is. There's no game where you would say the, the Heat are going to be outworked. That's just not who they are. And so I think what we've seen from the Celtics as far as the inconsistency goes is almost by fault of their talent and their riches. Sometimes we, I mean, we all do it. It's a human experience, right? I got it, I can, I can clean up the mess, I can make up the deficit, whatever it is, and it hasn't panned out. The Heat have played with a level of urgency that the Celtics, in general, through this series, just have not been able to Well, match. you make such a fascinating distinction there because w w you just actually defined it better than I did. They have more talent. For sure. Th that's the better way. That's what I should be saying. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Celtics definitively have more talent, and I'm taking that and saying, thus, they are the better team. And what you're telling me is the team with the most talent doesn't necessarily mean they are the better team. Absolutely. In this particular series, that has not been the case. It is the urgency with which the Heat have played with. And if you take game four out of this equation, games one and two, like, 
they are just rolling, right? Like they are out working, out hustling, all the things. And I'm not taking away how good Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown are. They are terrific in this league, bar none. But on that particular night, the Celtics, or excuse me, the Heat, time and time again, just outworked them. And as much as the NBA, the series are the setup, you got to win four, the Heat only have to win one. And I think I would feel different about that 150 stat, perhaps, if these two teams had not met in the same place last year and Jimmy Butler wasn't on the mission that he's clearly on. Yeah, Gabe Vincent is one of the many unsung, what's the right way to describe him, <laughs> you know, heroes the Heat have, players who don't have big names and big reputations who've played huge, but he's got an injury here. What can you tell us and what does it mean? Yeah, so he sprained his left ankle um, in the second half of that Game 4 victory. It looked pretty bad to me. The Heat gave it some testing yesterday and listed him as questionable for tonight's Game 5. That's actually good news because I thought that was going to be mistime type of injury. Um, if he is limited, uh, look for Kyle Lowry potentially to play more and Jimmy Butler to handle the ball more. Gabe Vincent is not a, a bit player. He had 29 points in game three, had 17 points in game four before the injury. He's a key player, and the Heat are already down two guards. Tyler Hero and Victor Oladipo out for the playoffs with their injuries. So um, this is a key thing to see whether or not he can play one and two, whether he can be effective enough to start. And, and so, VC, when we mentioned this earlier, you brought up that they have Kyle Lowry, who obviously has championship experience. But if the ball is in Jimmy Butler's hands more, take me on the floor. What does that, act, as the fans who are getting set to watch this game tonight, what does it actually mean for the Heat and for the game in general if Jimmy Butler is forced to have the ball in his hands and initiating the offense more? It means whoever's in front of him better be able to move his feet because Jimmy that Butler stands that you're, 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 missing, you're missing a guy in Gabe Vincent who's not going to give you, who's not on the floor or can't give you that, you know, that burst of, of, of offense that you need. So Jimmy Butler says what? Oh, let me go out there and get it done. You know, Jimmy is that kind of guy, and Jimmy's been that guy all year long where he's empowered other guys. He's given other guys the opportunity to be themselves, and Gabe Vincent talked about that. He said the one thing that's given me confidence is our superstar allowing me to go out there and do what I do. Well, now, if he's seeing that that one guy's not out there or they're not getting it done, we've seen Jimmy Butler just say, you know what? All right, get, give me some room. When I throw you the ball, shoot the ball, knock it down, mm -hmm. but I'm going to get it. And he's going to put the pressure on whoever is standing in front of him, whether it's Grant Williams, whether it's Tatum, whether it's who, it doesn't matter. Marcus Smart, it doesn't matter. So I look for uh, Jimmy Butler to really, you know, impose his will in this game. But I also think Kyle Lowry is like a, a huge backup plan. This guy yeah. was the starter. This guy has the, a, a, a basketball IQ. He understands the moment, and he's been in situations where it's a closeout game, and he rises to the occasion as well. So he'll give Jimmy Butler a lift and, and somebody else that he can rely on. I love that, VC, but I think this one to me is going to come down to the same thing we saw in game four, the Celtics' ability to defend. When they committed defensively mm -hmm. and were able to get out in transition or even early in their shot clock, as opposed to coming down in the half court and then you're kind of looking like, why is this so stagnant? The Celtics have to be able to move fast. And so that's probably the side that I wonder a little bit about Jimmy Butler if he has to run the one, just the overall toll. But we certainly know Jimmy Butler is in that class of superstar. That's considered a two-way guy. So it'll be interesting to see, but you definitely got to get ready for him if he's barreling down the floor as the one. I don't think it's overstating it to say that Jimmy Butler is playing his way into a Hall of Fame kind of scenario with the way he's playing right now. His career is such an unusual one. He's gone from place to place. Everywhere he goes, they win. Everywhere he leaves, they lose. Mm -hmm. um, and here he is. If he leads this team, one more win, to an NBA Finals, I think it would be the greatest accomplishment of what I think is turning into a Hall of Fame career. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.